it is illegal to collect rainwater in Colorado. No longer allow people to throw footballs and frisbees on LA's beaches. An elderly woman is killed in an alligator attack in Fort Pierce. Can you imagine a time when typical activities were once illegal? The 1980s, which were famous for big hair, neon colors, and iconic music, also had some surprising laws. What quirky regulations existed in this vibrant decade? Discover the unexpected legal landscape of the 1980s and be amazed by what was once forbidden. Join us as we unveil 20 weird things in the 1980s that were illegal. In the 1980s, Florida was home to over a million alligators. These ancient reptiles were intriguing and intimidating, prompting the state to enact several protective laws. A family's dog was killed by a gator near the West Orange Trail in Winter Garden. One unusual regulation made tying an alligator to a fire hydrant illegal. This law's roots lie in the early 20th century when alligators were hunted nearly to extinction. By the 1980s, conservation efforts had successfully boosted their population, but some quirky laws remained. The ban on tying alligators to fire hydrants aimed to prevent reckless behavior that could endanger both people and alligators. Imagine someone casually leashing their pet alligator to a hydrant while running errands. It wasn't exactly a typical pet-sitting scenario. Although the date the law was abolished is still being determined, it had become obsolete by the late 1980s. Florida's alligators continue to thrive, with laws focusing on safe coexistence. Feeding or disturbing their natural habitat remains illegal, but you're no longer in trouble for tying your alligator elsewhere. In the 1980s, Florida was bustling with over a million alligators, protected by unique laws like not tying them to fire hydrants. But did you know Massachusetts banned exploding golf balls to safeguard players? Let's explore more curiously crafted laws. In the 1980s, Massachusetts made it illegal to sell or use golf balls that could explode. This law, part of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 148, Section 55, aimed to prevent accidents on golf courses. I'm like, that's not, that doesn't look like my ball on there. <laughs> and I'm like, but I don't have the discipline to step off the tee box. Imagine hitting a golf ball and having it explode mid-flight. This was the hazard the state wanted to avoid. Exploding golf balls was a genuine concern at the time. Some pranksters and mischievous golfers tampered with golf balls, adding volatile substances to cause chaos or laughs. The law sought to protect players, spectators, and greenskeepers from these dangerous pranks. Though the law remains in effect today, it's rarely enforced. Modern golf balls focus on aerodynamics and distance, and the threat of explosive golf balls has become a thing of the past. In the 80s, Alabama had an unusual law that puzzled many. It was illegal to drive while blindfolded. Kids don't try this at home. That's the thing. first thing I want to tell everybody. This regulation was part of a broader effort to ensure road safety and prevent reckless behavior. The origins of this law trace back to a specific incident in 1954. Two individuals, one of whom was a farm equipment dealer, were arrested for driving while blindfolded. Astonishingly, the farm equipment dealer managed to drive approximately 20 miles without being able to see. Though it might seem bizarre, blindfolded driving was a genuine concern, possibly inspired by daredevils or misguided bets. The law aimed to protect drivers and pedestrians from potential accidents caused by impaired vision. While the law remains in effect today, it's rarely enforced, and modern drivers are unlikely to encounter blindfolded motorists. This peculiar rule continues to be a part of Alabama's road safety regulations, highlighting past efforts to address unusual and dangerous behaviors. In the early 1960s, Gainesville, Georgia passed a unique law, making it illegal to eat fried chicken with anything but your hands. It is illegal in one town to eat fried chicken with a fork. This law was created to protect a cherished tradition in Southern cuisine emphasizing the joy of eating crispy fried chicken directly with your hands. The rule aimed to preserve the authentic experience and pride associated with this beloved dish. Though the law was more symbolic than practical, it led to some memorable moments. In 1977, Colonel Sanders, the founder of KFC, was humorously arrested for using a fork to eat his chicken. His playful punishment was to finish his meal utensil-free and return for more chicken. In 2009, on her 91st birthday, 
Jenny Dietrich experienced a similar playful arrest. The city's police chief arrested her for using a fork, only for it to be revealed as a prank. She was honored as the Honorary Georgia Poultry Princess, showcasing the lighthearted nature of this quirky law. In Utah's early days, fishing came with some quirky laws. One peculiar rule was the prohibition of fishing while on horseback. This unusual regulation didn't exist when Utah first passed its fishing law in 1853 titled, An Act to Prevent the Needless Destruction of Fish. This law allowed county courts to oversee fisheries, but didn't mention horseback riding. By the 1980s, however, the rule against casting lines from horseback appeared. Imagine cowboys and cowgirls ready to fish from their saddles, only to be stopped by the law. The reason behind this ban remains to be determined. It might have been due to concerns about disturbing the fish or damaging the stream ecosystems with horses. Thankfully, this strange rule didn't last forever. By 2014, the Utah Fishing Guidebook no longer mentioned the prohibition, allowing anglers to fish from horseback. Today, Utah's fishing regulations have evolved, and horseback fishing is no longer a legal issue. In Utah, fishing once had unusual rules like no fishing from horseback. Could South Dakota's cheese factory laws have been as quirky? Let's explore sleeping in cheese factories and their legal evolution. In the past, South Dakota had an unusual law that made sleeping in a cheese factory illegal. This odd rule emerged long ago, likely because someone thought napping during cheese making was problematic. While the exact date when this law started has yet to be discovered, it has remained in the books for many years. One possibility is that lawmakers were worried about contamination, imagining a sleepy worker accidentally dozing off into a vat of cheese. Another idea is that they believe cheese production required workers to be always fully alert, thus enforcing a strict no-napping rule. Regardless of the rationale, it became a part of South Dakota's legal system. Fortunately for cheese lovers, this quirky law was officially removed as of May the 31st of 2022. Similarly, Utah's fishing regulations have changed over time, and horseback fishing is no longer a legal issue. In the 1980s, Mississippi had a unique law that made it illegal for an unmarried man and woman to pretend they were married when checking into a hotel. This law aimed to support traditional family values and maintain a robust moral code. According to Mississippi Code 97-29-1 of 2013, if a couple lived together without being legally married, they could be fined up to $500 each and face up to six months in jail. Interestingly, the law didn't require public displays of being a couple. Simply having habitual sexual intercourse was enough to be in violation. However, in practice, this anti-cohabitation law was rarely enforced. The Mississippi Supreme Court recognized that the law was widely ignored, and cases of criminal cohabitation were seldomly prosecuted. So, while pretending to be a married couple in Mississippi hotels during the 80s was technically illegal, it was unlikely to result in legal trouble. In the 1980s, a strange law in Georgia made it illegal to tie a giraffe to a telephone pole or street lamp. This law stemmed from events dating back to the 1800s when a circus brought giraffes to Atlanta. These majestic animals captivated people with their long necks and graceful movements, but city officials worried about potential accidents or damage involving giraffes and urban infrastructure. They feared the chaos if a giraffe wandered near busy streets. The Atlanta City Council passed the law to prevent such incidents, although the exact year needs to be well documented. It became known as one of Georgia's quirky legal regulations. Fortunately, this peculiar law was repealed over time. Today, there's no risk of anyone being fined for tying a giraffe to a telephone pole in Georgia. During the 1980s, Los Angeles had an unusual rule. You couldn't throw a frisbee or any ball on the beach without permission from a lifeguard. Throw a football or a frisbee at an L.A. County beach and you could be fined $1,000. This regulation wasn't just about frisbees. It also covered footballs and other types of balls. The concern behind this law was safety. Officials worried that energetic games of frisbee or football could accidentally hit people relaxing or walking on the beach 
leading to unexpected injuries. The Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors initially banned these activities to prevent such incidents. However, in 2012, they decided to relax the rules a bit. The updated law allowed beachgoers to play with frisbees and balls from Memorial Day to Labor Day, but only if they got permission from lifeguards first. Those who ignored this rule could face fines, $100 for a first offense, $200 for a second offense, and $500 for three or more violations within a year. This change aimed to balance fun with safety, ensuring everyone could enjoy the beach without unnecessary risks. In LA during the 1980s, playing frisbee on the beach required lifeguard permission, emphasizing safety. But did you know Colorado once regulated rainwater due to its unique water rights? Let's explore this intriguing law next. This law predates the 1980s. It stemmed from Colorado's unique water rights system governed by the prior appropriation doctrine. According to this principle, water rights are allocated based on a first-in-time, first-in-right basis. In a dry climate like Colorado's, every drop of water from snowmelt or rain is crucial for existing water rights holders downstream. Colorado is the only state in the country that bans people from collecting rainwater. One of the quirks of this law was the ownership of rainwater. Surprisingly, rain that fell on your property, including your roof, was considered to belong to those downstream. This meant collecting rainwater, even from your roof, was legally akin to using someone else's property without permission. Fortunately, attitudes toward rainwater collection have evolved. In 2016, Colorado passed House Bill 16-1005, which allowed most homeowners to use rain barrels. Now, homeowners can collect rain water in up to two barrels, totaling 110 gallons, for outdoor irrigation. However, it's important to note that untreated roof rainwater is unsuitable for drinking. This change marked a shift towards more sustainable water management practices in the state. In the 1980s, a curious tale circulated about a peculiar law in Providence, Rhode Island. Supposedly, selling toothpaste and a toothbrush to the same person on a Sunday was forbidden. This story became legendary, often shared as a quirky fact about local regulations. However, upon closer investigation, it turned out to be completely untrue. No such law was recorded in Rhode Island's legal statuses or Providence's city ordinances. Regardless, residents and visitors of Providence were free to purchase toothpaste and toothbrushes any day of the week, including Sundays. So if you find yourself in Providence on a Sunday and need to stock up on dental essentials, you can do so without legal concerns. In some parts of Ohio, there used to be a strange law that forbade people from walking backwards after sunset. This law was part of Ohio's traffic regulations, although the reason for this peculiar rule remains unclear. It might have been a concern that pedestrians could accidentally collide with cars or trip over themselves while walking backward. This quirky prohibition was a mystery of legal history. But this rule has since been removed. With time, pedestrians can now walk in any direction, even if it means walking backward like a moonwalk under the night sky. Walking backward under Ohio's fading light was once forbidden, but laws evolved. Now, in Massachusetts, dancing to the national anthem was once taboo. What other curious laws shaped American life? Let's explore. In the 1980s, Massachusetts had an unusual law. It was illegal to dance to the national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. According to Massachusetts general law, anyone who played, sang, or performed an anthem as dance music could be fined up to $100. The law aimed to uphold the anthem's seriousness and dignity. It required that it be performed in its entirety and as a separate piece without adding any other melodies or embellishments. This meant no dancing or additional creative interpretations were allowed if the anthem was played in public venues like theaters, restaurants, or cafes. Fortunately, societal views have evolved since then. Today, the interpretation of the national anthem during performances is protected under the First Amendment as a form of free expression. This change reflects a broader acceptance of artistic expression and the understanding that cultural traditions, including the anthem, can be respected while allowing individual creativity and interpretation. In Hawaii, an unusual law once banned a seemingly harmless act, placing a coin in one's ear. 
1847, King Kamahamea, ruler of the Hawaiian Islands, enacted this curious prohibition. The reasoning behind it stems from the influence of Filipino culture in Hawaii. According to local beliefs, inserting a coin into your ear was thought to ward off evil spirits and bring good luck. The Hawaiians were keen to safeguard their currency from any mystical influences. Authorities might have questioned whether there was more to it, perhaps illegal dealings or hidden intentions. Over time, this peculiar law lost its relevance and grip on people's everyday lives. Today, it serves as a quirky reminder of cultural intersections and historical curiosities in Hawaii's rich tapestry. As societies evolve, such laws fade into anecdotes, leaving behind stories that illuminate the nuances of cultural exchange and beliefs across islands. In the 1980s, California had an unusual rule prohibiting riding a bicycle in a swimming pool. This rule came about because of the popularity of BMX riding and skateboarding at that time. Teenagers often sneak into empty pools in the winter and fall, turning them into impromptu skate parks. They would ride their bikes across the bottom of the pool, defying gravity and doing tricks. The law was meant to prevent damage to property, accidents, and perhaps bikes getting wet. Imagine lifeguards blowing whistles at kids attempting to do tricks by the pool. However, this law wasn't enforced much, and many people in California didn't even know it existed. Eventually, safer places like skate parks were built, where extreme sports could be done legally and more safely. Over time, the prohibition against bikes and pools quietly disappeared. It's now remembered as a quirky part of the past when bicycles and swimming pools unexpectedly mixed. In California, riding bikes and swimming pools was once forbidden due to BMX and skateboarding trends. But did you know New York once banned ice cream on Sundays? Let's explore more surprising laws. In New York's legal history, an unusual rule once existed. Eating ice cream while walking on a Sunday was illegal. The odd law, part of an old blue law intended to uphold specific moral standards, made consuming ice cream cones on the Sabbath a punishable offense. This regulation was based on the desire to maintain decorum and order on Sundays, traditionally reserved for rest and religious observance. Imagine a sunny Sunday in Manhattan, where someone strolls with an ice cream cone, unaware they're breaking the law. Maybe they left a trail of melting ice cream behind them, or perhaps their treat sparked unexpected chaos. Regardless, the law was clear, no ice cream cones on Sundays, except on Halloween and at masquerades. This exception hints at the rule's whimsical nature, allowing for some indulgence during festive times. Thankfully, this odd regulation eventually faded away, allowing New Yorkers to enjoy their Sundays without fear of legal consequences. In the 1980s, Georgia had specific regulations concerning the use of car horns. It was mandated that every vehicle must have a functional horn capable of being heard from at least 200 feet away. This law aimed to ensure that horns were used primarily for safety reasons, such as alerting other drivers to potential hazards and preventing unnecessary noise on the roads. Using horns for any other purpose other than ensuring safe operation was prohibited, promoting civility and reducing highway noise pollution. Imagine if everyone honked at each other's cars for fun. Well, that would create chaos. Georgia lawmakers implemented this regulation to control horn usage and maintain peace. Interestingly, this rule didn't apply if you were honking your own horn to warn another driver of danger or to alert pedestrians. But honking just to annoy someone else was strictly prohibited. This law reflected Georgia's efforts to balance safety and consideration for others on the road. It ensured that horns were used responsibly for their intended purposes rather than causing disturbances or unnecessary irritation to fellow motorists. In the 1980s in Colorado, you could ride a horse while drunk without getting a DUI charge, but there was a catch. A separate law banned riding animals, including horses, while intoxicated on public roads. So if you decided to gallop down the highway after drinking too much, you could still face penalties. Colorado's DUI law only applied to vehicles that could move themselves using wheels or tracks, which horses, being four-legged animals, did not qualify as. Therefore, 
Technically, riding a horse while drunk didn't count as a DUI offense. However, if you chose to navigate your horse through traffic on a public road, you risked being fined up to $100. Riding an animal on a highway intended for motor vehicles while under the influence was considered a Class B traffic infraction, the least severe penalty for a traffic offense. So, while you might escape a DUI charge for riding a tipsy horse in Colorado during the 1980s, riding it on a public road could still get you in trouble with the law. In Colorado during the 1980s, riding a tipsy horse didn't lead to a DUI charge due to its non-vehicle status. But navigating such a scenario on public roads risked fines. How about California's strict water laws today? Let's explore next. Back in the 80s, California had a unique law that caught many people's attention. It was against the law to water your lawn when it was raining. Everyone should try to do at least 20% conservation of their water use. Yes, you heard that correctly. During a rainstorm, using sprinklers was forbidden. This law was part of California's broader efforts to conserve water. The state frequently faced droughts, making water scarcity a significant issue. Legislators implemented this regulation to combat wasteful water practices. It aimed at preventing water situations in which people watered their lawns while the rain was naturally watering them. This rule still applies today. The State Water Resources Control Board has emergency regulations prohibiting lawn watering within 48 hours after measurable rainfall. This continues the tradition of conserving water resources, ensuring every drop counts during California's ongoing battle with water shortages. The law serves as a reminder of the importance of water conservation, urging residents to use water responsibly even when nature provides its supply through rainfall. In the 1980s, Vermont had a strange law. You couldn't whistle underwater. If you were swimming in a lake or a river in Vermont, the law said you had to stay quiet no whistling allowed. Some think this rule originated when people believed whistling underwater was disruptive or unsafe. Maybe they worried that fish would start dancing together or that mermaids would join in with songs. Whatever the reason, the law remained in place until 1991. On May the 9th that year, Vermont ended its ban on underwater whistling. It was a quirky law that had puzzled people for years. But finally, it was no longer illegal to whistle while submerged in a Vermont lake or river.